author Darcy O'Connor came across some spectacular stories while he was researching his book, Montreal's Irish Mafia, the true story of the infamous West End Gang. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're speaking with O'Connor about his book and about some of the most remarkable crimes of the Irish Mafia. When I, I moved up here from uh, New York in uh, uh, late 79 and the first job I had up here was with uh, Dawson College uh, in a prison program. As I was creating, uh, teaching creative writing, of course, I told them you always write what you know about. And so they would write short stories or even uh, film scripts that always seemed to do with robbing banks, uh, tunneling under vaults, and things like that, or making uh, escapes and so on. The uh, most interesting student I had was a fellow by the name of Rory Shane. And uh, he would write these uh, short scenarios and scripts. And uh, I remember uh, one of them was about a bank robbery, uh, robber uh, out on the West Coast in Victoria, who had uh, made a getaway on a sailboat. Uh, by a commandeering a sailboat and so on. I thought it was fiction, but it turned out it wasn't. He was, he was talking about one of his uh, famous escapes, and uh, he was a very interesting person. Until the day I arrived one day in prison at the, at the class, and Rory wasn't in class, and I asked the, uh, the other inmates, I said, oh, where's Rory? And they all grinned, and they said he went over the wall. And uh, he'd escaped. He then spent the next three months robbing banks, which he, in, here in Montreal, that he was good at, and uh, his robberies were quite spectacular. Uh, one of the most spectacular uh, getaways that's ever been done in Montreal, and the police still talk about it, was Rory and his girlfriend. He dressed all in black leather, she dressed all in red leather, um, hired a helicopter ostensibly to do a uh, sightseeing tour uh, out of um, Dorval Airport. And uh, they got into the helicopter in the back seat, and uh, right after it took off, Rory pulls out a uh, 45 revolver, puts it to the pilot's uh, cheek, and says, um, and tells him to land. Rory, with a duffel bag, runs into the bank, uh, fires his uh, his submachine gun in the air, robs the bank, uh, throws the money into the duffel bag, and runs back to the helicopter. Meanwhile, people in the uh, uh, in the uh, shopping center are watching this going on and, and uh, they figure, well, wow, this is neat. They're making a movie. <laughs> and it looked like an action movie in progress. Rory climbs back in the helicopter and they take off and he has them land uh, near a, a metro station in Montreal East and uh, right on the road. And he and his girlfriend jump out of the helicopter, jump into the metro and disappear. So this is what he was doing instead of being in my class. And then his the last crime that he pulled was he was in court at the uh, Palais de Justice here um, for all these bank robberies and various things when all of a sudden he pulls a gun on the judge. <laughs> Nobody had ever seen that before. Anyway, the guards jump on him and so on and it was a small starter's pistol uh, that he had somehow uh, uh, got and uh, so he was given a lot of time for that. Last I heard he was deported back, he was originally born in Germany and had been adopted here and that's where he got the uh, Irish name and uh, he was deported back. And I'm still trying to track him down. He'd be in his late 50s now, and uh, maybe early 60s, and uh, uh, he's a pretty interesting guy. The Brinks robbery uh, was, it still is, the uh, largest uh, uh, robbery from a Brinks uh, truck uh, ever in uh, North America, and uh, it was uh, $2.8 million, and it happened in uh, March, uh, the end of March of uh, 1976. And uh, it involved both the West End gang and the East End gangs that are working together. They uh, got somebody from the inside who was a driver for Brinks in on it. And uh, he had actually been uh, a French-Canadian. He had been uh, in Korea during the Korean War and um, a gunner. And he pointed out to them that um, because their idea was while well, the Brinks was uh, truck was stopped at the Royal Bank uh, head office down uh, in Old Montreal, um, that he would uh, you know open the door and let them take it. He said, "No, it's not going to work that way. They'll know it was me." He said, "You have to threaten the uh, driver." And he said, um, "You know, only something that will penetrate steel and glass would uh, frighten me." So, through the West End gang, he managed to procure a, a 50 caliber anti. Uh, anti-tank uh, uh, weapon and uh, the idea was to have this in the back of a van 
and uh, this laneway uh, beside the uh, Royal Bank uh, head office uh, would, uh, w was where the truck every Tuesday would pull in to pick up uh, money and this is money that the head office was distributing to its um, other branches in the outskirts of the city or to stores. When the uh, three guards who were uh, in the truck got out to pick up the money, uh, this van would back up, the back doors would open, and uh, the driver who was in on it would be faced with a 50 caliber machine uh, 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 gun, anti-aircraft gun, and uh, would open up, uh, would be forced to open up uh, the truck. So anyway, that's the way it was done. Then the, uh, uh, one of the other bad guys who was in the van jumped in beside the driver and said, let's go. And they followed the van and uh, ended up in uh, Nuns Island, uh, where they then transferred the money to uh, other cars and so on. And uh, they got clean away. And of that $2.8 million, only uh, about $400,000 was ever recovered. There was you know, a, a several uh, killings that went on just to solve that one crime. But uh, in the end, um, uh, it was never really solved and most of the money disappeared.